Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the cheating scandals. Now, it's always interesting what happens when you throw a little bit of money into the Magic community. In this case, being part of the Magic Hall of Fame gives you eternal rewards. You are essentially on the gravy train for life. So people who are in the Hall of Fame, they are all, for the most part, friends with each other. And they are competitors with the people trying to get in. Some of the people trying to get in. Uh, the best example I have of this is Chris Picula. Uh, this guy called out a lot of notorious cheaters. Some of those cheaters are in the Hall of Fame. So whenever we have the Hall of Fame ballot season, a lot of this uh, tension arises. Very passive aggressive the rest of the year. But when you throw out a carrot, and that carrot is a gravy train, you have people coming out of the woodworks to defend themselves, like Li Xian Tian, and you have people making other claims or people rehashing old claims. And the same can be said about Magic YouTubers or any really small niche community. You throw out a few hundred dollars, and then you watch the community tear itself apart. So Patrick Sullivan, I love the Hall of Fame season. When else do the game's biggest stars and community figures, past and present, gather around to share stories about how their contemporaries are pieces of shit? And that is probably the best description of what's going on right now. It's not even like a, a large sum of money, right? It's not even a great honor. But you have a little piece of money, you throw out a few hundred dollars, and now past and present Magic players are tearing at each other. So Sam Black calls out Brad N Nelson for stalling in the Hall of Fame 2018 discussion on SoundCloud. I would give it a listen. It is very drama. Uh, Sam Black begins his discussion of Brad Nelson by saying, I personally will never vote for Brad. I believe Brad stalled me at Worlds in a match that very likely would have cost me a Worlds top four. He calls Brad a cheater and discredits one of his top eights because it was a stone list. One Reddit poster. So pretty much Reddit at this moment in time is people accusing other people, pros accusing other pros of cheating, and or pros defending acquisitions of cheating in a Google Doc. Uh, currently, the Magic Pro looks more like a Spanish telenovela than a professional game. It makes every Magic player looks like a grumpy antisocial outcast that can't treat others with respect when the top players do so much complaining about other top players. And this is kind of magic in general. Um, you have people who, for a, it's like they're hooked on drugs. I mean, that's the only way I can explain their reactions. So moving on to top players accusing each other of cheating, what is the Magic Pro Tour going to do about it? They are going to do more. Now, when is the last time we heard a vague statement without any specific details as to what they're hoping to accomplish, what the goals are, and how do we achieve those goals? My belief is if you're a pro Magic player, learn how to cheat because everyone else is doing so. You cannot play on an even playing field. This has been in Magic for the longest time. The... Absolutely, this process will take time, but we want everyone to know our intent after this week's conversation in the community. So I'm, so I'm so glad the Magic Pro Tour made it clear that cheating is not acceptable when there is money at stake. And it's not really their money, right? So Magic Pro Tour is, has a different funding, but the GPs and Star City Games, the whole point is to turn a profit. So you're using the competitor's money in kind of a gamble. I know we can't call it gambling, but in a semi-poker gambling scheme to give a winner a large chunk of that 50%, well, 
GPs are now like 10% of the winnings. We are always actively monitoring our mentions and we're happy to bring those thoughts in the community into this conversation. Thanks. So the Magic Pro Tour is, uh, it's just embarrassing uh, from the pro trying to backstab each other to the vague statements of doing better. Whenever a company comes out and their statement is, we're going to do better, that is not something that you would want a company to do. That is a company in the decline. That is a company that has experienced embarrassing activities. And the best way to summarize it is no changes. Right? Unless you're going to detail me, hey, if people get banned for cheating twice, they'll get, or people get caught for cheating twice, they're going to get banned for life. Or people who get caught on camera cheating and then lie about it will get banned for life. There's got to be some standard. Uh, the standard cannot be we will do better. That is a terrible standard because if your definition of better is better than you're currently, then I would say, well, you started at a very low point and you increased it. So instead of 99% cheaters, we have 98% cheaters in a pro tour. Well, yeah, we did better, but how is that going to help anyone? Uh, did people expect, really expect an immediate ban? That's not happening. Whether or not Bacini is getting a lifetime ban isn't something they're going to decide quickly. And the argument, I mean, Bacini's name was not mentioned, but the conversation will always be about Bacini as long as he is still allowed to play. Whenever you think of Magic Cheater, what name pops up? Like what name pops up? When you think of Magic competitive play, what name pops up? And I did a video on Alex's, uh, quote, apology, but his ap apology has lots of hubris. And hubris, I think, is different than pride. Uh, hubris is, well, okay, confidence is you can be confident to do something, but you don't have to be overly arrogant or egotistic to do it. Alex is egotistic. He is just the f second time, well, the first time he was banned, then he came back and in the Star City interview, which is a really famous, uh, you can Google it, uh, he's asked all these questions about, you know, and, and he alludes to two explorers, you know, did you miss me? Um, this is not someone who will, who is humble. This is not someone who any game would want, right? Like, I mean, outside of the quote, entertainment and hate value. Again, this post did not mention Alex's name, but the whole drama is Alex. And this is after he was not caught cheating. So let me repeat this. I know Alex probably didn't cheat at this tournament. There were a lot of eyes on him. But the problem isn't that he didn't cheat. The problem is he will always disdain Magic the name. There's no scenario. Let's say Alex doesn't cheat for the next two years. And honestly, he does. Like, let's pretend that he does that. Whenever he tops eight, this is going to happen. We're going to talk about cheating. Whenever he does well, we're going to talk about cheating, even if he doesn't cheat. And that is a black eye on Magic the Gathering. Because as Alex does better and better, Magic the Gathering does worse and worse. It has an image problem because it's associated itself with Alex. And now you might make the argument that um, Alex, you know, he's got to cheat one more time, then we can ban him for life, blah, blah, blah. But I would say it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what Alex does next. There is not a redemption arc. The redemption arc was after he got banned the first time, he came back, a thousand times more arrogant than before and then got banned again that was the redemption arc we are beyond the redemption arc uh, a lot of people will criticize my belief but uh, i've hired lots of people uh, at my current startup and my startup that i used to work for that sold 
and I work with lots of clients, and I can tell you that if your front desk steals from you, no amount of training will prevent them from stealing from you because they're stealing based on circumstance. And maybe they have a sick child, maybe they have um, certain needs at home that you're not aware of, maybe even you are aware of it. The conditions, the circumstances that made them steal from you have not changed. Therefore, talk, being nice to them won't change. Being mean to them won't change. Uh, taking away the company credit card is not going to help because they can use the front desk credit card. Uh, there are so many different scenarios where um, if someone wants to do cheat, they're going to cheat. And if they have cheated in the past and been punished and they have lost their reputation, they lost their brand, they lost their ability to be sponsored, who would sponsor this guy? What if the penalty for cheating, the for getting caught for cheating the first time was so severe because you lose all your reputation? Then what makes you think that in after Alex's case, he came back a second time? He cares about any of that now because if he cheats and gets caught, what does he lose? Not his reputation, not sponsorships. There's nothing for him to lose. And that is the dilemma that a lot of people face uh, in the justice system. Felons and, you know, my managing partner was a felon. Um, I don't know if he, yeah, I think he was a felon. He was, he had a plea deal. He pleaded to something really bad and... He didn't tell me, and I, I only learned after a meeting with a client, and he was like, hey, is this this dude? And I was like, uh, no, I don't think he is. And then he sent me a few articles. I read the articles, and I was like, wow. Um, and then later I found out that our credit cards were being misused. Um, he, he was the other managing partner, so he had complete, he had a complete access to the credit cards and the billing, and we were down 160 k and yeah, some of that was normal charges, but then some of it could not be. Uh, I, I don't know, right? So that's my personal experience with people who cheat is uh, their circumstances have only gotten worse and they have less to lose. Why would they change now, right? So if they had a lot to lose and they had better circumstances and they still cheated and stole or did something bad, um, same with the um, the predators, right? Like, if someone is um, going to do that and then now they're on the predator list, they're being watched more closely and and they lost everything, right? Like once you're on that list, you lose everything in your life uh, because you will always be known as a predator. Why would you... I don't want to say why would you not do it because now there's more security involved, but... If everything was the same, you'd have less to lose. And I love, you know, people would tell me stories of, oh, X, Y, Z changed and oh my gosh and all this great stuff. And a lot of times the characteristics that make someone change is inherent and the circumstances are different and the circumstances get better so people can be more generous when before they couldn't be generous even though they wanted to be but economically they could not afford to be but then once the circumstances get better you can don't for me i'm going to go on a tangent again um, i have a little bit more money now uh, i'm i bought out the company so i don't need to worry about the uh, over quote investor overhead and i can work with dogs more i can spend more time helping animal shelters and donate donating or doing marketing as a donation for them for free so yeah bye